Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please do a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can. Just get out there a little bit more with that being said. Let's get right into the video. And these are my thoughts on every single first round pick that just happened last night. Just a disclaimer I know some guys more than I know others. You know what I'm saying? So there's going to be some things that I talk about a lot. There's going to be some things I talk about a little, but I will try my very hardest. If it's not the actual pick, it'll be about the team. I will try my very hardest to give every fan base at least something to listen to so first of course the atlanta hawks select zachary richard shea hopefully i'm saying that right yeah the hawks man this is a really interesting pre-draft process with alex Sar like not accepting their pre-draft workout and he comes out and he's, and he's like yeah his team and his agents are just like you know what this might not be the best situation for me and along with all the trey young rumors the Dejounte rumors them saying that Jalen johnson is the only one that's untouchable and Hawks fans and people around the NBA just not knowing what direction the Hawks were going in. That also could be a reason why Sars Camp was like, hey, maybe we don't really like the situation because, yeah, going to a team with Trey Young and DeJounte sounds like something great for the progression of a young center. But if we get there and Trey Young's traded, then I feel a lot different about this situation. So, but they do get Ricochet, somebody that. I'm not really high on as far as superstar potential. I do think he's a good player. I think he can play now. I really think he can play now, but I think that he needs to be in a role where I think he needs to do as little as possible in his first couple of years or just his like first two years, right? I think he can do things now as a 3 and D prospect. He will get into like a secondary playmaker because I don't think the Hawks will have Trey and Tejante for for like a couple of years of his career. Like, I don't think they're gonna stay together. And he has a lob threat in Clint Capella, right? He has a guy in Okongu who can stretch the floor and is a lob threat. He got Jalen Johnson who's a lob threat. I think there's a lot of guys that can really handle the ball on his Atlanta Hawks team. You got Trey, DeJounte, uh, Jalen Johnson, and Richard Shea. I think Richard Shea probably is gonna play the three. He might start. I don't know if he starts um, on day one. I think Hunter brings what the Hawks need as far as like a stronger defender, um, especially in that star lineup with Trey Young. But Richard Shea can defend. He can shoot the ball. He can handle. His off the dribble creation is spotty at times. It's a lot of flashes that, of course, you see with a number one overall pick, of course. And then there's stuff that is like, okay, turnover here, wild shy here, not the greatest finisher. But I think once he gets stronger and I'm not saying he's like a Jason Tatum, so I don't even take the hat out. But like, as far as the body composition coming into the league, I think like, because Tatum was a really, really skinny kid, but he was a lot more polished than uh, Ricochet is now. But just as far as like the body, I think that um, it has a lot to do with the early struggles at the rim that Tatum have, and it's the same thing with Ricochet. And I think that if he gets stronger, those drives to the rim are going to become better. He's not getting knocked off his line as much, and he's also finishing more. So I did like this pick um, for the Hawks, even though I think SAR is the best, is should have been the number one pick in this draft. I think if none of that shit with SAR comes out, he's the first pick. But yeah, I do like this pick for Atlanta, but it's still some questions that they need to answer as far as uh, Ross construction. Second is Alex Sar, and I'll just speak on the Wizards for a second. Like I began this day super mad at the Wizards, man. You don't trade Denny for that, bro. I've seen conflicting opinions about this. I've seen people say that the Blazers gave up too much. I am in the camp that the Wizards, why? Why do you do this? Like I haven't seen an explanation on to why the Wizards did this. Now, of course you get a lottery pick. That's cool, right? Of course you get a lottery pick. That's always good to get a lottery pick. But they just traded their best all-around player for Malcolm Brogdon, who they're probably just going to flip again. Hopefully they can get a pick. Well, it's not a first, but hopefully they can get something. The Blazers just turned them into Avdia. So, I mean, I don't know. Avdia was turned the corner. I, I have two videos on Avdia on this channel. The first one is Denny Avdia is turning the corner. The second one is... The game after I posted that one, he had 43 points and 15 rebounds. And a really good thing that I saw was them hiring Brian Keith as as the actual head coach. A thing that I liked about that was that Denny took over under Keith because Keith was putting the ball in his hands more. And it just it didn't make sense to me, bro, because Abdi is on one of the best contracts in the NBA, four year, 55 million dollars. 
he's making 11.8 million in 2028 so it's not like he had to be extended and the wizards are like hey we don't feel comfortable paying him this like this semi max so let's just trade him and again i i don't think the 14 pick is bad i don't but i think he's their best player like kuzma is a better shooter probably a better scorer but denny is a better is a better handler he's a better passer and he's a much better defender and i just i don't know why you do that i don't know why you do that and the blazers i'll talk about them when their pick comes up but just a monster pickup for the blazers a young guy who is locked down on, again on one of the best contracts in, in the league denny was supposed to be a cornerstone of that team but you got a new cornerstone here number two overall alex r will come right in and he will just play he is in the freest position possible a team with no centers except for what bagley and rashawn holmes guys that the wizards would not prioritize over him if he just stays healthy he's gonna have the freest rookie season <laughs> that i can imagine bro no expectations now i wish he had a point guard to set him up i don't know what they're gonna do with ty jones i think ty jones is a guy that can set him up to get about six to eight easy points per game um with his athleticism but sar his upside is really really good if he puts it all together i think he comes in as a top 25 defender already especially with like his versatility and his ability to stay in front of guys and move his feet slide his puppies at 7-1 like the athletic profile and the archetype is just phenomenal like that's the foundation is his height his weight his speed and his lateral quickness that's the foundation of alex r so at the very least he will give you things in his rookie season athletically that you might not have seen before as far as him going to the rim as a finisher too like the alley hoops the the pump fake and attacking closeouts at seven one the fluidity just driving and dunking the ball stuff like that and then on the defense side of the ball every single game you see of alex r there is a point where he gets on the perimeter and he does work right and he's just he's there bro he's there it's it's not easy to get around this guy and if you do you have to be very crafty because he can come backside and block your shot so if he puts together that offensive game, which everybody is hoping he does because he has some shooter potential. That's why he's number two overall pick. He has the defense already, still has to learn a lot about positioning and some awareness things. But again, the foundation is his athletic profile. If that shot comes around at any point, bro, he's going to be a monster. He's going to be a monster. So at three, we have the Houston Rockets who select Reece Shepard. Reece Shepard is a perfect fit for this team. And this is kind of the reason why I didn't like the Fred Van Vliet signing in the first place. I thought 40 million was a lot for Fred Van Vliet, of course. It also came after they got the fourth overall pick last year. And you knew that one of the Thompson twins was going to be there. Like, if you pick a men, that's your point guard of the future. Now, Ime Udoka is a guy that is not, I don't view him as a coach that is a tanking type of coach. I don't view him as a guy that's going to be like losing a lot of games. So, him coming in as coach and the Rockets picking up Fred Van Vliet and Taylor Brooks and Jeff Green, that's not a coincidence, right? But for 40 million, I thought that was a lot for Fred. If it was like 25, that's something different. But something that Fred can do is he can help you win some regular season games, can help a younger point guard like a Min Thompson, and now like a Reed Shepard, really teach them how to be pros in this league because he started from nothing, right? An undrafted guy from Wichita State. He's a champion and he's a guy with a great contract, living out his dream as an NBA player. But now you just drafted two guards who look to be your backcourt of the future, right? It's so much these two can do. On the defense side of the ball, Amin Thompson is already a game record. You add Reed Shepard to that, another game record on the defense side of the ball, they just gonna be flying around getting steals, deflections, all that shit, and then in transition. Reed Shepard, those great kick and half passes. He has very good vision. Amin Thompson flying through the air, slashing. And if you put it the other way around, you got Amin Thompson slashing and those trailers to Reed Shepard, those corner passes to Reed Shepard, him hitting those threes. Man, that's gonna be exciting. And then you add in Cam Whitmore with that young group. Hey, them boys gonna be flying. They gonna be flying off that bench. So. I really like this for the Rockets. You know, Reed Shepard isn't as tall as I like him to be, but when you watch him play, like, that's just not a concern. Like, 
his size it just isn't a concern he's a competitor he comes in as a three and d guard right off the bat like one of the best shooters in this draft probably the best shooter in the draft and one of the best uh defensive players especially on the ball and then at four you got the spurs drafting yukon guard stefan castle a lot of talk about him not wanting to be a shooting guard like he wants to play point guard and he was trying to like align his pre-draft workouts with teams that will allow him to play point guard and the Spurs are a team that will allow him to do that, I believe. They do like Trey Jones. There was an experiment last year with Jeremy Sohan about him playing the one. That lasted a lot of that season. Not very successful, but I don't expect him to be super successful with his first actual season playing point guard, so that's fine. Castle has a pathway to being a point guard for the San Antonio Spurs. He is a winning player at the least. I don't think it's the best spacing for uh, Victor with, with Castle, but at the very least, like Castle is gonna do the little things. And with an organization like the Spurs, with a coach like Greg Popovich, Castle's gonna get on the floor by playing defense. Similar to DeJounte Murray. When he was a youngin, the scorn was not something that was there at first. Now, it probably was there, but it's not something that was shown because he understood that, hey, for me to get on the court with Greg Popovich as my coach, I gotta do the little things and I gotta play defense. Castle will understand that from day one. And it's being in a program like UConn, it's playing for a coach like Dan Hurley. Like he instills that in his players from day one and it translates to the league because coaches wanna see that. And especially the fit with San Antonio and Castle, it's it's just a perfect fit for me. And that five, the Detroit Pistons pick Ron Holland. I, I really like Ron Holland as a player. I didn't get this, this hype that he was potentially falling out the lottery into the into the 20s and shit like that i he's just he's too good of an athlete he's too good of a defender and he's too good of a slasher like yes the spacing will be a problem fucking ron holland and asar thompson whoever that shooting coach is that the pistons just hired when i, I seen him he was with the pelicans i seen a couple of guys that he improved their three-point shooting by like seven to eight percent in like two seasons here's your real test motherfucker. it hit Here's the real test. If you can somehow make effective shooters out of Asad Thompson and Ron Holland, my brother, you going into the Hall of Fame. I will go up there and put you in there myself. Like, man, hey, if you can do this, your spot is, is, is ingrained in history, brother. So look, I do really like Ron Holland. And for a team that just needs something, right? I do, I do feel Pistons fans when like, you know, they've had the worst record and they keep getting the fifth overall pick i do feel for that again just ron holland as a basketball player i do think his defense like i do think he's a good defender but like the g league elite tapes is sometimes where he has like awareness it's, it's kind of it's kind of like Jalen brown right where Jalen came in as a defender the celtics were already a good team right and you have people in front of you that are really good so you have to come in and you got to do the little things right but Jalen brown prior to this year right he had way less of this this season we all know that Jalen brown can defend when he puts his mind to it but off the ball sometimes he would just make bad help decisions his help defense iq would be off he would just get caught lost get caught back door stuff like that that's the stuff i was seeing from ron holland but on the ball when he's locked in nasty just nasty so if ron holland can bring that to the pistons and just shoot a little bit. God damn. Can, can you shoot a little bit, brother? <laughs> just some. Can you help Kate out, please, brother? Appreciate you. And yeah, I don't really mind this by the Pistons. Would I have liked them to pick somebody with shooting? Yes. Probably like a Devin Carter. But again, he's a guard. I don't know. If they have Ivy and Kate. I don't really know if they need another guard. But I think Carter can play up and down the lineup. Not like the three or the four. But I mean, he could probably guard three because he's, he's, he's really... um aggressive and he's a good defender but yeah i i do like ron holland here for them all right so with the sixth overall pick the charlotte hornets select tijan salone okay this is this is one of the guys i don't know a lot about but um what i do know is athletic tools like this is this is what you're banking on like he has elite size he's a guy with great motor i think he has a seven two wingspan he's about six eight six nine and you're banking on him being able to hone in his skills while having an elite frame. He's not a great shooter yet. I think he shot about 32% last season. The last two prior seasons, I think he shot about 35 to 36%. So you you can see that he can shoot a little bit. He's like a really good finisher. Well, not a really good finisher, but I think that's the strength of his game at this point. He's not much of a playmaker yet. I think his assist to turnover ratio was pretty bad. But in transition, 
with LaMelo Ball, with Brandon Miller. If they keep Micic, is another great passer. Also, you got Trey Man. You have guards that can really play make out of that pick and roll. And of course, in transition, when LaMelo gets those rebounds, he always has his head up. Salone, I don't know if it's Salone or Salone. Please tell me if you know. I'm looking forward to seeing what his upside is like. I do like this team. I thought Devin Carter would be would be a great flop. I think he's a great fit for everybody. I'm probably just gonna say his name a lot in this video, but but yeah, I don't hate this pick for the Hornets at all. I I would have gone with a more NBA ready guy, like a guy that I know from the start is gonna contribute. But the Hornets aren't on that timeline. They probably aren't trying to focus on right now. So this is a cool pick by them. And at seven, the point trail basically select Diamond Klingon. I just I just want to get a blaze of this. I want to get the Blazers this, man, because for the opposite reasons of what I said about the Wizards, you get Denny Avdia, bro, like, solidify your wing position, right? You got Jeremy Grant, who you've been trying to trade for about two or three years. You extended him because you thought it was going to be something that kept Dame in Portland. Didn't end up working. You draft Chris Murray last year, who's solid. You got uh, Tumani Kamara, who's solid. But none of those guys are on the level of, of Denny Avdia, right? And this is a guy that can come in right now. He's going to start. And for a team that I think is pretty small, right? You got, you got School. You got Simons. Sharp is going to be considered small if he has to play the three alongside, uh, alongside School and, and uh, uh, Simons. Rob, who, again, you guys know I love to death, is a smaller center. The wings aren't a strong point on this team. So you get Avdia. And then there are concerns with Robert Williams. There's always going to be concerns with like his injuries. If he goes down, it, it hurts my sold to say but it's probably gonna happen and then you got deandre ayan who is very inconsistent they will have there will be runs and stretches of the season where he's averaging 25 and 12 then there will be stretches where he's averaging eight and eight but clinging clinging what clinging does right now is protect the rim right and that drop coverage he could probably be elite in that and him just protecting that rim man like he's also a very functional passer at the top of the key you can run your office through him a little bit him he might have some assist to a shark that's really electrifying some of those alley hoops but Klingon knows how to win right he's not worried about his stats and all that other shit right position is pretty good the only thing with Klingon is like his lateral movement and what he's gonna do on offense besides just like passing and screening maybe that's all he needs to do right that's fine but there's no shooting upside to me at this point there is no like he's not he's also not the greatest finisher so in traffic that might be something can he develop like a hook or something or can he just be better at finishing through traffic in the paint but love this pick by the blazers Klingon doesn't have a direct path to like significant playing time at this point but again if rob gets hurt again or he's like or he has to miss like a portion of the season or i mean if aiden gets hurt too like he's a guy that's gonna slide right in and he's gonna get a lot of playing time and um he's gonna get that experience now at number eight the spurs pick rob dillingham trade him to the minnesota timberwolves this confused me, right? This really confused me. Now, I wasn't the, the biggest fan of Rob to the Spurs. They do need point guard play, but I think they need point guard play. Now, again, this is not me saying that Rob can't play make, right? But Rob's first instinct is to score the ball. I think Castle can be honed in more than Rob can. And to be honest, if I was a coach, I wouldn't want to hone in Rob, right? I want him to, to be as creative as he can, right? So I just didn't think the Spurs was the greatest fit for him. I thought at eight, you go Carter, you go Buzelis, um, you either go Cody Williams, or I would have reached for the silver here. Like, like there was role players to get at number eight, but you trade them, fine. Like, I've heard things about the Spurs trading back and all that shit. One, I didn't like that they traded out the first round. You go from pick eight to not in the first round, right? That just, I don't know. It is, they did get a 20-31 unprotected pick. Um, along with like a, uh, a, a pick swap. I'm guessing that the Spurs are banking on the T-Wars being in uh, salary cap hell by 2031, but Ant will still be like 27, 28. So it's like, how bad is he gonna let that team become? Again, anything can happen. So we'll just have to see. But yeah, I didn't like that the, the Spurs didn't get a pick back like in this first round. I believe Rob Dillingham, like the eighth overall pick should net you something this year. Some, a, a player, a pick, something something and it didn't um and i thought they could have really used that pick for somebody get to get another uh uh building block on their team 
but they, they did it for the Tim Wolves. This was really good by them. I'm really interested to see how Rob Dillingham fits with that team. They definitely need a point guard of the future. Conley is getting old. Alexander Walker is not playing a lot of point guard. He's playing that two and the three, and he's really uh, playing his ass all defensively, and he's turning to a three and D player. So not really going to be at that one position. But Rob Dillingham, his scoring, his, his scoring alongside Anthony Edwards, and they had the defensive infrastructure to put around him. That's his weakness is defense, right? He has kind of short arms. He's not the strongest guy, and he's just not a good defender yet. I don't know if he ever will be, but he's not right now. And yeah, so I'm really interested to see how that works out. But yeah, I didn't really understand this move by the Spurs. Um, save some money, of course, but what are the Spurs saving money for at this point? I think you need to put people around Vic. Again, Devin Carter, De Silva, guys who can shoot the ball and play defense. And then a really big surprise, the Grizzlies at number nine pick Zach Eady. John Moran had a had a funny post about after they jotted Zach Eady. But again, I think not again, but I think I think this one is pretty simple, bro. Like the Grizzlies wanted a center. Their top choice was Don McClingan. They I don't know if they were calling during the draft when the Pistons were picking. I don't know if they were calling during the Hornets pick. They couldn't get a deal done to move up to get Klingon because Klingon was there for the taking and they couldn't get a deal done. So what did they do? They go and get Zach Eady. Now I am really interested to see how Zach Eady fits with the Grizzlies. Um he's gonna be a target. Not like as far as like for other teams, but he will be. But as far as like jaw rolling or jaw slash into the basket he's gonna be a huge target for john moran and maybe this this gets jaw some more assists maybe this slows jaw down as far as like all the jumping and the contact he takes it helps his body you know what i'm saying but this is another thing that i really think is an interesting fit because Zach Eady, well, I saw him shoot some jumpers at the combine. I saw him shoot some jumpers in some like pre jab workouts. It doesn't look bad. His release does not look bad. It's like he has the Jokic shot where it's like, give me. So if he's able to just set really strong screens, if it's able to, if he's able to protect that rim, if he's able to just be a force in the paint at 7 4, and if he can knock down his free throws at a respectable clip, I think Zach Eady can be a really good NBA. nah i won't say really good really good but he will he will be a, he can be a quality nba player for sure he will be their only real five on the roster that i can think of right now hopefully i'm not blanking on somebody but i do like this fit for zach Eady and the grizzlies i i'm just really interested to see how it plays out and at 10 the jazz select cody williams i love this i love this i love this the jazz clearly have a theme right those big wings last year you pick um taylor hendrix right out of ucf six nine six ten wing with supreme athletic tools supreme wingspan just the foundation is his athletic profile right can you mold him into becoming a good player he started to come on later in the season when the jazz were, were just losing games but he shows the flashes got cody woods from colorado colorado the guy that seemingly can be a guy that can do a little bit of everything right he can sh he's supposed to be able to shoot the ball the dribble off the dribble and play defense right six eight six nine forward with with some guard skills if he can just show things right the jazz are in no rush there's been a lot of talks about larry marketing we don't know what that's going to be like but if larry is traded that does pave more minutes for guys like taylor hendrix and cody williams and i do like what the jazz are doing here because these uber big stretchy lanky lineups in like three years if they're two wing defenders is taylor hendrix and cody williams and those guys are stronger than what they are now that can be really dangerous with their size and speed and their versatility and with the 11th pick the bulls select modest Buzelis out of g league ignite this was a match made in heaven man he's from chicago i was watching the numbers on the board podcast when they were doing their interviews and shit at the draft combine and and kenny and p and all of them are from chicago and they really hit it off right and he even went golfing with them like a couple of days after so he's already in the chicago ties right with the media and all that stuff and he's this this brings a really interesting element to the to the chicago bulls a guy that was supposed to be like a top five pick like lock early on in this draft process shot bad last season think one season defines you as a shooter and if he is able to be a better shooter he's gonna need it next to josh giddy who seems to be a priority with this team. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty with this team, whether DeMar Rosa comes back, are you gonna trade Zach Levine? Are you gonna pay Patrick Williams? Are you gonna keep Nikola Vucevic? There's just so many questions with this team. And Buzelis, what I think he does well, he, he, he can handle the ball and he's a really good passer. And I think he's a better defender than he gets credit for. I think 
help side, especially like him coming off, helping on the weak side and blocking shots. I think he's really good at that. On ball defense is something that still, you know, has to be sorted out a little bit, but I think he's okay to solid there enough. And yeah, I just really like this for Modest um, being able to stay home, and I like this for Chicago. At number 12, the Thunder select Nikola Topic. Um, this was this was interesting, right? Because he's like similar to Josh Giddy, where he's a tremendous passer, not a guy that's gonna really shoot much yet. The the thing I will say about Topic is that he's a much better driver than Giddy. He's an actual force sometimes when he's going to the rim. Maybe they're banking on Topic being a, a better shooter when he comes back because um, he has a partial ACL tear. And I heard one of the ESPN dudes, maybe it was Jonathan Cavoni, saying that he might not touch the floor this season. So if you have a guy that's going in that Chet trajectory where he's not going to touch the floor this season, but he's going to be under NBA tutelage, he's going to be under NBA fitness programs, NBA practice regimen, and and. That's why I never understand when people are like, oh, he's still a rookie. No, you were training on a league program for an entire year. You're not a rookie. That's an advantage. bro. <laughs> yeah, you haven't stepped on a court, but the most important shit is the work. That's the most important shit because that gets you the results on the court. And that also keeps you on the court. You got to stay healthy. You got to be able to play. So all that shit before the game is very important. So again if 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 topic can get that shot right because we just seen giddy who is a stat sheet stuffer on most nights but if he's getting played off the floor because one he can't defend and two he can't shoot the ball you're playing four on five basically on both sides of the court and thunder can't have that again so just picking somebody with giddy's archetype was kind of puzzling a little bit but I, i'm not really down okc right now and i do like Toby's as a player this video is brought to you by prize picks prize picks is america's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members prize picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports unlike other apps on prize picks it's just you against the numbers all you have to do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winners roll in get in on a daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community today download the prize picks app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on prize picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less, it's that easy. With the finals over, the hoops action doesn't stop on prize picks. Women's basketball is still heating up, with stars like Kaylin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves alongside great like Brianna Stewart and Aja Wilson. You could win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out. If you're looking for promotions, prize picks has got you covered every week. From low and select player stat projections on Tuesday to help your lineup hit or getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. I've been using prize picks for about two years and I've made a pretty penny in that span. I've only been doing men's basketball and football in the past, but with the rise of women's basketball, I think it's time for me to get into that. I remember making my first $10 deposit and receiving an instant $10 bonus. If you have the skills, you can play for a shot at turning your $10 into $1,000. Once again, download the prize picks app today and use code C LNS for its first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's code CLNS on prize picks for a deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And at thirteen, the Sacramento Kings select Devin Carter. I th I really wanted the Kings to get a wing, a defensive wing, but Devin Carter is just amazing. You can't really uh, fault this pick. I felt bad for Davion Mitchell. Like this is just this is his job, and. Devin Carter is exactly what the Kings need. They need a defender, but he's just way more than that. Average 20 points at Providence, nine rebounds. He averaged eight point something rebounds, bro. At what, 6'4", 6'3"? A very, very athletic with a 42, 43 inch vertical. One of the highest in the combine. A guy that can do everything. A guy that can redo really everything. He can shoot it, he can dribble, he can pass, he can defend. Deflections, on ball steals, stay in front of guys. Like, this is what they needed. If he was 6'7", he, he would be a top 10 pick easily. Devin Carter, man, a really good fit on a lot of these teams, but I think on a team like the Sacramento Kings that really need the defense, he was a perfect fit. Trailblazers at 14, select Bub Carrington, which is the Wizards pick from the Denny Aldea trade. I like this for the Wizards, right? There's a lot of point guard talk about them not having one. We don't know what Ty Jones is. Well, I'm sorry. We don't know what Ty Jones is going to be doing, um, if he's going to stay or if he's going to leave. Jordan Poole is still learning the position, really, because he's been he was playing with Steph Curry all along, and in that system, he's really moving. He was the sixth man at that. He was coming off the bench with the Warriors, and he was just able to thrive and let his creativity flow. For the Wizards, he kind of had to get a little bit more of a floor general role, and he had to 
get those guys involved because he was the lead guard a lot of the time. And it just wasn't an efficient season for Jordan Poole. A lot of bad moments, you know, a lot of bad games, a lot of bad shots, but he will learn. He he will definitely learn. But Bob Carrington is a really, really silky smooth scorer. That mid-range pull-up is the same every time and it's smooth, bro. He's a really good shot creator. Planning that pick and roll, he can put you in jail. And that sweet mid-range, those floaters. The thing about him is the finishing, right? And I, I heard something that like, he like grew like six inches in, in height like the last three years. So when he was playing in high school, like his sophomore year, like he's like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and him going to the rim isn't even a thing for him. Like it's not even something that even worked on so he had to get really good on his outside shot because he was short and he was skinny then you grow a little bit you're able to get your shot off a little bit easier and he also has a six a wingspan a guy that projects um his athletic profile he should be a decent defender six four six eight wingspan i like bub Carrington with this team especially if ty jones is not here i think um i need to see more out of him as far as being a playmaker because you have alex Sar. you you're gonna need to feed your your big man and you're gonna need to use Kula Bali out there um, on the wing. You got Kyle Kuzma out there on the wing. There's people to kick out to, and you do have a lot of dirt there with Alex Sar. So um, I wanna see more from Bub as far as a playmaker. I really think that can unlock a lot of, in his game, but as a scorer, a silky smooth shot creator, he he damn near has it all at 18 years old. And at 15, the Miami Heat select Khalil Ware. This was a really good pick for the Heat. This is something that I, I didn't want to happen, of course, as, as a Celtics fan. A real big man, a guy that can really, really be a real big man. He has shooting potential also. 7-1, is very athletic, can really block shots. So yeah, I really like Khalil Ware with the Heat. I hope he's not that good with the Heat and he goes somewhere else and he blossoms just because I'm a Celtics fan, so I'm a hater. This is a really, really good pick for the Miami Heat. Really good pick. And this could maybe push Bam to the four sometimes and they could play a bigger, more versatile lineup. I'm not sure how good he is Ware with perimeter defense, so... That remains to be seen. But with Bam hitting some threes last season, I don't hate the fit. And at 16, Jerry McCain from Duke falls to the 76ers. Just perfect for them. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Somebody that can come off the bench, no more campaign, no more Pat Bev. Somebody that can come off the bench and be really aggressive, be really competitive. Again, don't let the nails fool you. This guy is, he's a really competitive player. He's like a three and D guard. He will shoot that ball. I don't know if DeAnthony Milton is coming back, but I think they're really similar, right? um mccain can handle the ball can pass the ball can run those pick and rolls and he's comfortable with just stopping and setting up and shooting those threes and then on defense he's going to give you everything everything he has so really really good pick by the 76 is not overthinking it he failed to you take advantage of the opportunity at 17 the Lakers take dog to connect out of tennessee really good score top three shooter in this draft you got lebron james you got austin reeves you have creators right you need guys that's gonna knock down those shots, whether he's shooting those threes or he's or he's attacking closeouts. And he's also a shooter that's athletic and he has size. 6'6 six, six or a 6'9 wingspan, I believe, for Don Connect out of Tennessee. He can create stuff on his own too. So if Bron is demanding the attention of the defense like he always does, if AD comes out high in the first half at 22 points, and now that the and now that the defense is focused on, on uh, Anthony Davis, if Austin Reeves is drawing fouls and he's effective. That just opens up a lot of things for Dalton Connect. And again, it's it's the defense, right? He has to be able to be a good defender. JJ Reddick, new head coach. I'm pretty sure he'll find some creative ways to get his shooters open. Um, Connect. I'm pretty sure he had a part in that. Not saying he drafted him, but I'm pretty sure like he he likes Connect. And with the skill set that he has, I don't think Connect will have any problem getting acclimated to the Lakers. And at number 18, the Orlando Magic select Tristan De Silva out of Colorado. Man, he was falling the whole time. I'm like, bro, pick him. Somebody pick him. I wanted to sell the trade up for him, even though I know it's not gonna happen to 18. From third to 18, but Tristan De Silva, man, like skill, straight skill. And his count to me is Franz Wagner. And the Magic now have two Franzes. Pass, dribble, shoot. At 6'8", six, 6'9", six, again, he's not the most athletic guy. But that's what you wanted to start to see the Orlando Magic do. They were picking a lot of guys with two. Like Mo Bamba, you know what I'm saying? Like, pick the guy with skill. Franz has skill coming out. Tristan Silva has skill coming out. And these are guys that have really incredible feel for the game, the IQ, because that they're not uber athletic. They have to shine with the little things, like the angles in their mind to excel at this level. So... 
the silver again a bigger wing um a guy that can shoot the ball desperately the orlando magic are desperate for shooting at any position a height weight profile that the magic have always wanted and that is big wing so i like the pick for orlando magic next number 19 the raptors select jacoby walters from baylor i was seeing a lot of like top five ten especially lottery hype from him at the beginning of the season and something that really popped to me at the beginning of the season was his shot creation i thought he was going to be one of those guys that was just a pure bucket i think he is a bucket getter but at the beginning of the season he just looked like he was on another level as far as creating his own shot and then that started to tell off a little bit he started to shoot a little bit bad and with that being said this is still a three and d upside piece right you want a guy that is going to shoot the ball and play really fierce on the defensive side of the ball the raptors love these guys they already have ocha abachi you know what i'm saying they have rj barrett if jacoby walter can be anything like those guys well rj is what you want him to be but like if he can be like that if he can attack closeouts get to his sweet spots in the mid-range game where he can get that shot off anytime he chooses i do not mind this at all from the toronto raptors at 20 the cleveland cavaliers select Jalen tyson out of california this was the perfect spot for tristan to silver for me if he kept sliding but then um he goes and the Cavaliers select Jaden tyson right a guy can score from all three levels on the court a really really competitive guy i saw again the numbers on the board podcast where he's just flowing with confidence it's just it's just coming out of him bro so i'm just like man if he can really compete like this on the next level man he i don't see him not being good because he's just gonna work his ass off score from all three levels can really rebound can really pass the ball those pick and rolls a really really strong guy if you get on his hip or you get behind him in a pick and roll you're done his strength his craftiness you're not you're not getting back into play unless you're like extremely long like a victor or something like that where you can just block a shot over the top mm. he really knows how to play with his size and his strength and his craftiness and the angles and the pick and rolls the one thing you really want to see pick back up is the defense at texas tech when he averaged about like 10 points he was a much better defender at Texas Tech last season as a sophomore. His offensive low started to pick up as he goes to California. He averages 20 points, seven rebounds, and about four to five assists. The offense goes up significantly, but the defense also drops. So again, I feel like in Texas, I feel like in the NBA, he'll have more of a Texas Tech start where, okay, he's getting on the floor for energy. He's getting on the floor to play defense. And anything he adds on the offensive side at this point is a bonus right because he's in there for another reason that seems like the texas tech version of him so if he can start off with that texas tech version of him especially defensively i think he'll make a mark on his cleveland bench and with pick 21 the new orleans pelicans select yves missy out of baylor one of the most athletic players in his draft at, a, at the center position for baylor this is an uber athletic big movement skills off the charts um ground coverage uh a lob threat a shot blocker i did i thought the the pelicans would go with like kyle Filipowski because next to zion you need space ease misi is not a guy that's gonna be spacing the floor could be worrisome but zion is also a guy that plays a lot of that point four role so maybe it's pick and rolls with him and misi where he's throwing up that lob right and he's not really clogging up the paint for zion even though he's there because he's super athletic zion can put the ball up and he's gonna go get it and he's an extremely hard worker coach willie green is gonna love him and i do like this pick for the pelicans but i'm just in a mode where everybody they they employ has to be able to shoot because of zion williams next you got the suns picking deron holmes but it's really the denver nuggets right they signed zeke naji to an extension before the season thinking that he was going to be their backup of the future like just a viable backup and they extended him and zeke naji didn't really play a role in anything this season and well sorry last season and deron holmes is i thought i thought he was about 6'10 i really did but they said so i seen on tv he's like he's about 6'8 but the progression through college and his game for deron holmes has been insane um he's able to shoot now he can go off the dribble he can finish with with touch he can finish with power at the rim he can really defend average two blocks per game he can pass ball a little bit this is a do-it-all tweener type guy the nuggets do need a big off the bench there was times where old ass deandre jordan even though he was getting the job done some nights was catching oops throwing oops getting rebounds like if that's deron holmes th that is valuable time 
that he's getting experience in the NBA and all the and he has a lot of confidence, right? And the Nuggets have been plotting on him for like the beginning of this pre jab process for like ever since they lost, right? It was rumored that they really wanted a good backup center. Zeke Nodge again wasn't the answer. DeAndre Jordan, although we love him, is at the end of his times in the NBA as far as playing. Um, is a really good guy to mentor Deron Holmes and Deron Holmes can do a lot of things on offensive side of the ball. Plus, he's a good defender. He's smart. And yeah, he played in college for, for a couple of years. So like he knows the game. He really knows the game. And his skill set has just grown so much at Dayton. And I really like this for the Nuggets. At 23, the Bucks to that guard, AJ Johnson. I don't know what this was. Um, Don't know too much about AJ Johnson, but I did see him at the combine. He did look okay at the combine. So I will say that there were some flashes there, but really young. Not a guy I think that would be ready at all this season. Again, I could be wrong, but I thought like Collier here would be something because Collier actually has like a skill that's translatable right now. His ability to, to get downhill, even though I thought he was 6'5". He's about 6'2". I don't see AJ Johnson doing anything this season. I mean, I felt like he could have been there in the second round. The Bucks have picked 33, which is really valuable for like a championship contender team or trying to be a team that's contending for a championship. Having picked 33, having 23 and 33 is a really big deal. Um, you can get two chances at getting significant role players for your team. He's really frail. He's really young. He's just like a ball of clay right now. And it's just not some it's, it's not the direction I thought the Bucks were going to go in. Being a team with the, the Giannis and Dane, Chris Milton timeline. There's been a lot of talks about them trading Brooke Lopez or Bobby Portis. I don't know. But I thought they were going to go with somebody that was going to be that projects to be a role player as of right now. Y'all, I am tired of this shit. I'm pretty sure y'all already peeped it, but like, I'm tired, bro. But, but look, 24, Knicks trade the pick to the Wizards, Keyshawn George. I thought this was Keontae George's brother. I swear to God, but um, he, he went to Miami, right? As a silky smooth 6'7", six, 6'8", six, score, right? Has the athletic profile to be a defender someday, not his calling card right now. Again, his calling card is often silky smooth, can play in that pick and roll. Again, a really good shooter. This He's like a 6'8 Jordan Poole. And I don't mean that in like a bad way, right? Like Jordan Poole is a really, really creative player on the offensive side of the ball. And when he has things going, it looks beautifully. And he it looks really skillful. And Keyshawn George is like who or a taller Keontae George, right? Just really silky smooth. He's going to hit some tough shots. And you just hope that scoring isn't the only thing he can hit impact the game with because if his shot's not falling and he's not impacting the game anywhere anywhere else then you're kind of at, at a loss for him and with him having some experience at point guard at miami due to some injuries maybe he can be like a secondary ball handler maybe he can be a guy that's hitting sorry some open looks with his size and being able to see over the defense and shit like that so um i this is a really intriguing pick for me Again, I haven't watched a lot of film on Keyshawn, but I do know like the premise of his game. Really excited for that for the Wizards. And at number 25, the Knicks select like Pakum Dia. I don't, I don't know how to say his name, but again, this is one of um, these these really really young guys who um, really good frame. He stood out on film. Not on film. I didn't watch fuck film, but like he stood out because of his frame at a very young age, and. The, the Knicks are a team that just solidified their wing position, right? Trade for Mikael Bridges. Whatever the price is, it doesn't matter. You got him. Well, it does matter, but you got your guy, right? Resign OG. And now you got to find cheap pieces on that bench that can contribute in some way. Now, I don't, I, I don't think this guy will be able to do that year one. He has to get better, right? He has to get better. And that's just a really generic way of me looking at things but for an 18 year old that hasn't shown a lot at some point he got to show it but again the athletic profile the archetype you see what he can be he has great agility great acceleration um is a great mover at six eight with that body so just wanting to see how he grows in the Knicks system see if they can really develop this guy and at 26 the wizards select well the Knicks select Taylor Jones from Weber State, and then they trade him to the Thunder. Now, I again, I don't understand it for the Thunder why they picking two guards. I don't know. Uh, Kyle Filipowski is still on the board. Not saying it's a perfect fit, but they do need a big, a dim bonus there. Like, they need a big. But they pick a big guard in Taylor Jones, who is a player I like. I just don't understand the fit with OKC, especially after picking Topich. A guy I like to compare to, like, a Trenton Walford, where he's a bigger guard. He's, like, 240. He's 6'5", and... 
he used his body really well. Again, not a phenomenal athlete, 6'5", 240, but if he gets you in a position where he's able to use his body, you're shielded. You're done. You're not you're not getting the leverage back on him, right? And he was a do-it-all guy at Weber State. Like, I'm talking like points, rebound, assists, points, rebound, assists, just killing you that way. And he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. Well, he had the ball in his hands a lot. Not sure how he's going to operate not being the greatest shooter, but being a guy that needs the ball in his hands. With a team like OKC, who has Shea, who has J Dub and stuff like that. So I'm not I'm like I don't expect him to be taking like pick a roll responsibilities away from those guys. And he's not super young. So like the G League isn't I mean he can still go to G League, of course, but like it's not like a long term project, right? So I mean it could be. I'm I don't know. But I just I don't understand the fit a lot with this team. If the Wizards hadn't picked Keyshawn George. I would have liked him with, with that team, even though like defensively, he wouldn't have been that great. I don't think he's a great defender, but like on offense, he's a guy that can really, that can methodically and strongly, a guy that can really creep his way into crevices on the pick and rolls and use those angles in his body and his shoulders and his strength to get stuff off. And at 27, the T-Wolves really keep up the theme of offense with Terrence Shannon Jr. out of Illinois, really, really explosive score offensive player he is explosive man and the, and the wolves when it came playoff time they were a team that really they were pressed for scoring and you bring in rob dillingham you bring in terrence shannon jr and that bench man the scoring off that bench the athleticism off that bench they gonna be getting hype in minnesota off that bench bro and it's really young two rookies who can really flat out score the ball Terrence Shannon, really explosive score, can handle the ball, can pass a little bit, can rebound. I'm not sure how good he is on defense. I'm not sure how he translates to the NBA, so I won't even talk on that. But um, he has good size. He has good athleticism. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to make some impact on that side of the ball. But uh, T-Wolves keep up with the offensive thing with Rob Dillingham and now Terrence Shannon Jr. And with the 28th pick, the Nuggets select Ryan Dunn out of Virginia. This pick goes to the Suns. This is a guy that was two picks away. He is, to me, the best defender in this draft. The best all-around defender in this draft. On ball, off ball, the weak side help, blocking shots at 6'8", uber athletic. If you want to talk about disruptive, Ryan Dunn is disruptive. He has the size, the wingspan, he has the wherewithals, he has the, he has the athleticism, he has the awareness, he has everything on defense to be an impact impact defensive player at the next level like that's his floor is like all defense to me like his floor is like second team all defense will he give you anything on the offensive side of the ball i don't know i think he's a better slasher than he gets credit for i think he's a better finisher than he gets credit for i think he's a better passer than he gets credit for but an nba is different right it's really different in the nba so i just gotta really see what his offensive game is like he could be like a matisse style but Matisse can shoot on some occasions. Ryan Dunn has not shown any consistency in being able to shoot. So we don't know. But as far as defense, the Suns get a really, really uh, good defensive stopper on a team that doesn't have a lot of them. And and it's a guy with size. Now, you have offense. You have Bradley Beal. You have Devin Booker. You have Kevin Durant. So maybe they're just going to try to put him in a position where he can be most effective on offense without having the ball in his hands and having to be a scorer. Because you do have those guys to take the load off him. But on the other end, he's going to fly around. So, good pick by the Suns. 29th pick by the Utah Jazz. You have Isaiah Collier out of USC, the guard. This was, this was interesting because at the beginning of the year, he was like a top 10 lock. A guy that can really get downhill and score the ball. His strong shoot was driving to the basket. Really, really strong driver. A guy that's a guard that's not going to be knocked off his line a lot of times. So and he's going to finish strong acrobatically with, with power and uh, emphatically you know so i really like isaiah collier i think you know after that hand injury it just it would never got back together there were some stretches there where he was really good but um again you do worry about the shot sometimes but the finishing ability from him the attacker he's kind of, i want to not he's not like colin sexton but i think he has like that sort of edge of competitiveness and that same like attacking mentality that Colin has. And I think it will bode well for the Utah Jazz. And lastly, with the 30th overall pick, my ball and Celtics are like Baylor Shireman out of Creighton. A really effective offensive player, right? He can do a lot of things. Average about 19, nine rebounds and about four to five assists. A do it all, another do it all guy, a lefty. The thing with him is he's not very athletic, right? On defense, his lateral quickness is not good. 
he will get blown by a lot of times and he's just not quick on his feet that also comes up on offense sometimes where he's still gonna probably hit a tough shot on that possession but like he's not creating that much separation of course there's times where he gets separation but like in the tournament game that i watched against tennessee again i'm gonna watch a lot more games so don't don't let this form your whole opinion on him but in tennessee where they have really good on ball defenders which a lot of teams have in the in the nba it was really hard pressed for him and that crane team to get any separation from those guys and there were possessions where he's strong enough he's a big body he's like six seven two something right and he's able to like use that shoulder use his body to get a shot off even though he wasn't getting a lot of separation now that's a mark of a good score because when you don't have a lot you can still make something happy happen that's good so yeah the lateral cleanness is my biggest concern but in that tennessee game in the sweet 16 he was guarding tom connect like he started on him and he was guarding him so i don't know if that means he was just their best premier defender or that means that coach trusts him so either way it's a positive but i still think the divas will be a concern but he's a great shooter shoots with range and volume so you know that he can really shoot it can really rebound the ball and can pass he's a really skilled player at six seven again the speed the agility is is something to like frown at a little bit but the other parts of his game especially offensively he's really good at but that is a video if you enjoyed it please leave a like subscribe say to any and everyone that you can just be out there a little bit more and i will see you guys in the next video but this is nick peace